Pastor. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Hey, it's another blast of winter in South Florida. Feels good, though. You know, it's good to enjoy the change in seasons. And I'm glad, though, that it doesn't snow here. That's what I'm glad. I don't mind vacationing in snow, but I'm not so sure I'd want to live there. But uh, if God called me there, of course I'd be willing to live there. (laughs) But I'm so glad he called me to South Florida, glory to God. (laughs) And you are too, probably. But yes, God has a place for all of us, whether it's the north, the south, the east, or the west. And he wants us to be exactly where he wants us to be. And where we live, he gives us the grace to live there. And um, praise the Lord. You know what I'd like to do this evening? I'd like to do something. I'd like to pray for the officer. I don't know if you heard about it, who was shot yesterday. In South Florida, he was actually, uh, he got shot at actually in his yard, and he was home, and, and I don't even know the details, but I've just started to think about him right now, and, and uh, I'd just like to pray for that officer right now. I know he's recovering, I know, I don't know the full, I don't know all the details, but I just believe that you and I have a responsibility to pray for kings and for all that are in authority, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So um, let's just lift our hands to heaven just for a moment, if you would. And Father, you know this officer. You know his name. You know that he's been in service for, I think, 30-plus years. And we're just asking for your healing power now to saturate him, touch him, minister to him. And bring full recovery to him in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Well, since we're on the subject of prayer, let's lift our hands to heaven just for a moment, too, because we want to pray for actually kings, presidents, prime ministers, and all that are in authority. So, Father, we just lift holy hands to you tonight as a church, as your people. In fact, you said this is. The first thing we're supposed to do. You said, first of all, first of all, we are exhorted by you, by the Spirit of God, that we, your people, make supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks for all men. Then you tell us who those men are, for kings, presidents, prime ministers, and all that are in authority, all that are in a place of high responsibility. We do that now, Father. We lift up the leaders of government around the world, not only here in America, but for every nation of the world. We pray for them now. We make supplication for them. And we're asking in the name of Jesus, we, your people, are asking that your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding be given to them so that each one may govern by your wisdom, govern by your knowledge, govern by by your understanding, so that each one may rule for good and not for evil, that each one may rule and reign by the wisdom of God and doing all the wise things that you know must be done in the earth today. So, Father, as we lift them up, beginning with our president, President Trump, and all presidents and kings and prime ministers throughout the earth, we're asking for your perfect will to be done in each and every one as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord, that in 2018, you are pouring out your spirit upon them. You are pouring out your spirit, you said, upon all flesh. You've been doing it since the day of Pentecost. And we thank you for this, Father. Fill the White House with your presence. Fill our Congress with your presence. Fill the Supreme Court uh, of our land with your presence. Fill, Father, the cabinets 
of all the different branches of our government a government with your presence. Fill each and every department and every agency with your presence. We thank you now and ask you as your people at Words of Life, we ask that you pour out your spirit upon all who are in government today in America and throughout the earth. We pray even now for our governor, Governor Scott. Pour out your spirit upon him, Father. Pour out your spirit upon all who are under his leadership and his direction and guidance. We pray for the, for the mayors of Dade and Broward County and Monroe County and all of South Florida, West Palm Beach County. We pray, Father, for those that are in authority, and we ask you to pour out your spirit upon them, Father. And we thank you, Father, that you said in these last days that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And upon your handmaidens and upon your servants, you said, I will pour out of my spirit. And you said that signs and wonders were going to be done in the earth. And you said, Father, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We pray for those who are not born again in government to call on the name of the Lord. We pray that they receive eternal life, that they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that they call in these last days upon the name of Jesus to be born again. And we thank you for this happening. We pray even now that the Lord of the harvest send forth labors into your harvest, for they, as well as all mankind, are your harvest. And we thank you for this now. In the mighty name of Jesus and God's people at Words of Life said, Amen. Now we're going to do something that maybe you're not familiar with or maybe you are familiar with, but I want to take a minute or two and I want us to pray in the Holy Ghost about what we just prayed about. So if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, because that's what God's doing, He's pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. So men and women could be born again and men and women could be filled with His Spirit. And right now, if you're filled with His Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, would you just bow your head just for a moment and would you just begin to pray in the Spirit? Let the Holy Spirit now use you in a way that maybe He never has before in prayer. And let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Mandele bondos de le bandis de le atoro, coya mandele bandeke de manakin de dia nandele bohokota yende, mandele bandes de le bandoro hota yete de barakite, bristiti dia nalala katas de le goto to yandele kando stele mengili andaro, coyandele boto cayende de manacande, brendes de le bando stele bande ele mando ore mande ke le mande ke a mande. And the leco oste lica tare mando oste lecata. Bastele bototaye tele barekite. Bistaro totoyan de le bohokotayete. Mengesh de le bandas de le bandiki di analala bahakato. Mondesh de le bandas de le batate. For you know, Father, you know, Father, the mind of the Spirit, and you know what needs to be done. So I thank you for giving us the unction and the utterance to speak. Ele bondo ramahandeke. Everything that needs to be done. Thank you, Father. For giving us the utterance to speak everything that needs to be done. Mandesh de le koto roto ya bande le bahande ke maninge. Andesh de liatar manda koto ta yekete. Fill our president with the Holy Ghost. Fill our vice president with the Holy Ghost. Fill them and refill them, Father. Fill them and refill them continuously in the mighty name of Jesus. Mandele bando cora mando coya mande kele menge ingatare mande kele benge. We pray that they receive the Holy Ghost. If they're not yet filled with the evidence of, of speaking in tongues, we pray that they be filled and speak in tongues. All who are in leadership in our nation today. We pray for those who are born again. We pray for those who need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And we're asking and we're praying that they receive the Holy Ghost today. That they be filled with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. We thank you, Father, for this gift, this supernatural gift that you've given to us to pray divine secrets, to pray 
what you want prayed out in the spirit, Father. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers tonight, both in English, with our understanding, and in the spirit. Let's pray a little bit more in the spirit. Ishti di anando corro kota tare mande kere barakiri anala bahakata yende bengele bande le bondos de le ma ando onda aketea mandeste likata stika da nandando stele mendikiti anada la kato onda le kando stele manakiri anala la bahakate ke mengele manakanda de manakinde. Oh, it's vital. It's vital. It's vital, says the Lord, that we pray in the Spirit. Mandeste kem brondo rebando ko ya mande le maninge le bando ande le mahando ore mande ke le manakinde. Brendeste le bando, brendeste le bando. Oh, brando koto ya mande le manakinde. For I can do great and mighty things. For I can do great and mighty things when you pray in the Spirit, says the Spirit of grace and the Spirit of God. Mandeste le bando, rondoste le bando, ste le manakinde, mengele manakande. Father, we ask you, O Brende, touch our president today. Touch his mind. Touch his thoughts. Give him your thoughts. Give him your mind. We declare by faith that he has the mind of Christ. We declare by faith and with faith that we too have the mind of Christ. That we think your thoughts, that we know your ways, and we walk in them. Thank you, Father, for helping us in these last days do that. Walk in your ways in a greater way than we've ever known before in Jesus name and everybody said with me amen I'm going to read something to you tonight that uh, maybe you're familiar with or maybe you're not familiar with and maybe tonight you would say pastor Stan you know uh, you know I've never I've never I've never seen that before I've never prayed I've never heard people pray like that before maybe you're new to words of life or Perhaps you've just recently gotten born again, but, but God has a gift for you called the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he wants you to be filled with the Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And in Luke, I mean, sorry, in Romans chapter 8, here's what God said about the praying in tongues, 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. It's talking about the Holy Spirit. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, I'm reading from the King James, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There is a place in the Spirit where you will pray in groanings. You'll pray with groanings which cannot be uttered. In, our, in another, some translations have even inarticulate speech. I mean, you just, you groan in the spirit. And he that searches, verse 27, the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit. Listen to this now. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That's what we want. We want prayers according to the will of God. And verse 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. How many of you know God wants to have many brethren? The Lord wants to have many brethren, many born again. Well, prayer will cause that to happen. And we need to be praying, church. I'm just saying this. You know, this wasn't in the notes tonight, but it's coming to my heart to just share with you. We need to be praying for our president. 
whether you voted for him or not. We need to pray for him and all that are in authority in America. We need to be praying for leaders around the world so that those people can be touched and affected by God. Because if you and I don't pray, guess what? Father God has no legal entrance to move into their life. So God's Father God's counting on us. He wants us to pray. Now to shed a little bit more light on that, just for a moment, let me read this from Romans chapter 8, verse 26 from the Amplified. So too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. Do you know that we all have a weakness? And here's what it is. For we do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it worthily as we ought. You know, sometimes you don't know how to do that. So you need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost pray out and help you and aid you to pray out what needs to be prayed. Many times we pray with, from our own understanding. Many times we pray with our own mental uh, understanding. But God wants us to pray from the Spirit, out of our spirit, from our heart the things that he wants us to pray. So he does want us to pray both ways. He wants us to pray with our understanding. He wants us to pray in the spirit. But a lot of times, most prayers are coming out of a person's understanding rather than from the spirit. Unless, of course, you're spirit-filled. Baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and then you're exercising that gift. You have to exercise it. Just because we've prayed once in the Holy Ghost doesn't mean we're not supposed to pray again. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be living in a continual stream of praying in the Holy Spirit. It should be part of our lifestyle. So let me just read this real quick. So too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what prayer to offer nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself. Now that's actually a better translation because the Spirit is not an it. In the King James we read it this, it reads this way. But the Spirit itself, but really the proper translation, the more accurate should have read himself. Because the Spirit of God is a person. And we must recognize him as that divine third person of the Godhead in the Trinity. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is. Because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. So let me jump over here because next week, maybe this is why we're on this at the moment, next week we do, we are going to have one of the greatest ministries on planet earth in our presence. The ministry of Kenneth Hagen Ministries. Now, I say all that to God's glory because almost every one of your great faith ministers in this generation and in our lifetime has actually been affected by their ministry. So I want to encourage each and every one of you to do your best to try to be here on Wednesday night. Let's pack out the auditorium. There's no reason we should have empty seats. None. Let's do our best to compel them to come in. Let's get the word out and tell them and introduce them to a ministry that maybe some people aren't even aware of, but is one of the most balanced and rooted and grounded ministries in the word that you will ever, ever experience. Next Wednesday night, we are going to receive the gift of that is within Pastor Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. And church, next week, you're the Wednesday night group. You're the core group. You're the ones who come on Wednesday nights. 
next Wednesday night. And we're going to actually, let's do it right now. Let's put a demand on the gifts of God that are within them so we may get the full benefit of what God wants to do with their visitation to us next week. God is, they're not being sent here by accident. They're being sent here on purpose with a divine purpose and a divine plan to accomplish what Father God wants us all to experience and to know. So let's just lift our hands to heaven just for a moment and say, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence, for your power, for your glory at Words of Life. Tonight and every night and every day that we have ministry at Words of Life. Next Wednesday, Father, you're sending Kenneth Hagin Ministries to us and we receive this ministry with thanksgiving and we draw upon this ministry and the gifts that are within them for the glory of God to speak the oracles of God to deliver to us what we need to know to give to us what we need to accomplish your will in the earth, in our personal lives, and in our corporate life together. Help us, Father, to do our best to receive every gift that you have for us. Tonight, we, your Wednesday night group, We follow after love, and we desire every spiritual gift that you have planned for these three days of ministry. We desire the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. We desire the working of miracles, the gift of faith and the gifts of healing. We desire the gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy, and the the gift of the interpretation of tongues. We desire your gifts, and we thank you for manifesting them and, 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 and giving them to us as you will. And we especially desire to prophesy. Father, we thank you for anointing Pastor Hagen and Mrs. Hagen to teach and to preach and to deliver to us your perfect will through your word And by your spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, amen. Hallelujah. You think we're creating the right atmosphere right now for God to move here next Wednesday night? You better believe we are. Which brings me to uh, the lesson tonight, words. Words. They create the very atmosphere we live in. The words we spoke yesterday have made life what it is today. Words, they make us or they break us. Words, they bless us or they curse us. Words, they destroy us or they make us full of life, happiness, and health. Words are the most important thing that we speak on the earth. And that's why God told us, speak my word. Let's turn to John 6.63. Are you ready for the word of God tonight?
Last week, last Wednesday night, I had the title that the Lord gave me was Words of Life for 2018. Tonight, you might say it's the same title, but it has a little different language to it, Words to Live By. How many of you know if we're going to live, we've got to live by faith? That means you and I are going to have to speak faith words. The, the mandate that was given to Brother Hagen, the founder of Kenneth e. Hagen Ministries, when he was just a young man, a young minister, was go teach my people faith. Guess what you're going to be taught next week? Faith. And because of what you're going to be taught, you're going to live. Because the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. How many of you know we need faith? May I say it that way? In other words, we got to have it. And thank God we do as a born-again Christian. But how does it come? It comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So we have to be in a place where we're constantly hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's go to John 6.63 real quick, please. Folks, I just want to say this from my heart. It's imperative that you and I pray. And that we pray first for kings and all that are in authority before we even pray for ourselves and our family and even our church. Because we are living in a day, I'll just say it, where the devil's upset. He knows his time is short. And he's going to try to do things that you and I can thwart we can stop. Is that the right word? We can stop in the name of Jesus through prayer. But we have to be sensitive to pray. And we have to pray according to the word of God. Let's go to John 6.63. Then we're going to jump over real quick to, to uh, the book of Timothy because I would like for you to see those words on prayer. But first, let's go to John 6, 63. Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So when Jesus speaks to you, what does he speak to you? Life. He speaks spirit words. He speaks spirit life. He speaks life to your spirit, and he speaks life to my spirit. The real you is not the person on the outside. The real me is not this physical person. This is just the house we live in. The real us is the person who's on the inside of this house, and that's the person that gets born again, and that's the person that must grow spiritually, and there's only one way you grow spiritually, and that's with spiritual food. The Bible, my brothers and sisters, is the spiritual food God has given us to live by and to grow with and to grow by. Now, very quickly, jump over to uh, Timothy for a moment because I just want you to see this with your own eyes because one of the things, one of the mandates, if I may use that word, or one of the assignments that Mrs. Hagen has is to teach God's people about prayer. And she teaches the morning sessions. She'll be teaching on Thursday morning and Friday morning. And I know for many of you that might, you know, might not be possible because of your work schedule. But on the other hand, if you are able to legally and honestly get some time off, then I would highly exhort for everybody to be here because you will learn more about prayer, perhaps, in those two sessions 
than maybe you have in a long, long time. Because that's part of her calling, to, to minister on prayer. And now that I said all that, it wouldn't be something if she didn't minister on prayer. <laughs> but she probably will. I mean, every time I go or sit under her ministry, prayer comes out. But I said all that because you know, you know how it is. Sometimes you say, well, this is the way it's going to be. And then God does something entirely different. Hallelujah. <laughs> but no, no, she's going to be teaching on prayer. I know that by the, by the, the unction. By the unction. And one of the things that we need to do, church, is learn how to pray and what to pray. And many times people are concerned about themselves, not realizing that if we put things in proper order, you and I will be taken care of. And one of the things that God is asking the church to do is to first of all pray for kings and all that are in authority. Why? Because the leaders of our land, with one swipe of the pen, can change history. And that's why they need our prayers, because guess what? They're incapable of doing it without the wisdom of God. They're incapable of doing it right without the wisdom of God. So in the book of Timothy, we read these words, and I'm reading from the Amplified so you can understand what I'm talking about here right now. First of all, then, I admonish and urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all men. And then he tells you who those men are. For kings, and now in our modern-day language, we would call that presidents or prime ministers, the ones who have the highest office in their land when it comes to a governing position. For kings and all who are in positions of authority or high responsibility. And this is why. That outwardly we may pass a quiet and undisturbed life and inwardly a peaceable one in all godliness and reverence and seriousness in every way. For such praying is good and right and it is pleasing and acceptable to God our Savior. Who wishes all men to be saved. That's God's desire. And increasingly to perceive and recognize and discern and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. For there is only one God and only one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself as a ransom for all people. A fact that was attested to at the right and proper time. So folks, you want to learn more about prayer. I am encouraging you to be here next Thursday morning, 1030. Friday morning, 1030. Because what I, one of the things that I love about Kenneth Hagin ministry is not only will you be taught, but then you will act upon the word together as a body we will pray and it will be amazing the results that will take place for our nation and the nations of the world and how it will then personally affect us both spiritually mentally emotionally physically and we'll be praying about the services on the night services and it's just a wonderful thing. So what did I just read to you? Words. Turn with me now, if you would, please, to Romans chapter 1. Words. A man by the name of Matt Cartmill wrote an article called The Gift of Gab. Now, I've never read it, but I'm sharing this information with you. According to this article, 
Speech is a skill that makes Homo sapiens a uniquely successful, powerful, and dangerous mammal. Now, I'm using terminology that this author wrote. I'm also borrowing this information from a great minister at the moment. I received it from him through his own personal devotion that he offers through his ministry, and I'm just communicating to you something that needs to be communicated. So I cannot attest for this gentleman, Matt Cartmill. Uh, you know, but this article called The Gift of Gab was, was, was read by this particular minister whose material I'm ministering to you from right now. And from it, this minister, and I like to say it this way, he ate the hay and spit out the sticks. You know what that is? That's an old country term. You know, Dad, Dad Hagen used to say it this way. Be like a good old, smart old, wise cow. Just eat the hay and spit out the sticks. What does that mean? That means that maybe everybody's not going to say it right. <laughs> but you take the good stuff that they're giving to you. And you chew on the good stuff. And if there's anything in there that doesn't belong in you, spit it out. <laughs> Be like a good old smart, wise cow. Eat the hay and spit out the sticks. That's what cows do, you know. They ate the grass and they spit out the sticks. <laughs> well, listen to this. I say, I'm saying all that because today I want you to know that you are a speaking spirit. It says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so this minister, and I'm going to give you his name now, Mark Hankins, that some of you know of, great minister of the gospel, read an interesting article entitled The Gift of Gab. He said, according to this article, speech is a skill that makes Homo sapiens a uniquely successful, powerful, and dangerous mammal. Without language, he wrote, we would only be a sort of upright chimpanzee. How many of you know we did not come from a chimpanzee? I mean, I, I just want to make, see, that's one of those sticks. You just spit that right out, you know. Just spit that one right out. But he's, he's quoting from this, from this gentleman, okay. Without language, though, but this, this is true, though, in one sense of the word, without language, we would only be a sort of upright chimpanzee with funny feet and clever hands. But no, we're not that. We're not. We did not come from the animal kingdom. No, God created man in his own image. Listen to that. Listen to this. With the capacity to speak and communicate. A Hebrew scholar once said that Genesis 2-7, which I just read to you, and I'll read it again real quick, and the Lord God formed man, man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, could be better translated this way, that man became a speaking spirit. You see, man was made a speaking spirit, and given dominion. This was all given to us in the garden. The power of speech was a major distinguishing factor between man and the animal kingdom. You and I know this. We can see that language is unique to man. But now listen to what I'm about to share with you. But Satan also recognizes the power of spoken words. And he is trying constantly to get man to speak words that contaminate, defile, and destroy. But we have the power to choose. 
blessing or cursing, life or death, and so that we wouldn't flunk the test, Father God gave us the answer. He said, choose life. So everybody say, I choose life. Say, I choose words of life. Say, I'm going to speak words of life over my president, over my Congress, over the Supreme Court justice. I'm going to speak words of life over my governor, over my mayor, over my, the politicians that govern in my territory. I'm going to speak words of life. And do you think that if you pray words of life and you speak words of life, that those words will affect them? They sure will. Because Father God's going to hear and answer those prayers. So God in Psalm 1914 says this. Let the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable to him. The psalmist said it this way because this was his personal confession, his expression of his words to the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength. And my Redeemer. So what does God want from us? He wants the words of our mouth. And the meditations of our heart to be what? Acceptable to him. Now I'm going to jump over. I'm going to say a few things here. Words. They're more important than a lot of us realize. In fact, they're more important than a lot of people realize. Words make us or break us. Words heal us or make us sick. And as I just shared with you, according to the Bible, words destroy us or make us full of life, happiness, and health. Our words, not somebody else's words, but our words, the words that we spoke yesterday have made life what it is today. few thoughts about words. Your words, the words that you speak, custom design and specifically shape your own future. Words, the words that you speak are building blocks of faith. I have good news for you. Jesus won the war of words. There's a war going on that a lot of people aren't aware of. It's called the war of words. In Mark eleven twenty three 23, from the Weymouth Bible, we read these words. In solemn truth, I tell you that if anyone shall say to this mountain, remove and hurl thyself into the sea, and has no doubt about it in his heart, but steadfastly believes that what he says will happen, it shall be granted. Mark eleven twenty three. Church, Jesus defeated Satan in the wilderness by speaking the word of God. Satan said, then Jesus said. Satan said, then Jesus said. Satan said, and then Jesus said. And guess who won? You already know. The Lord Jesus won the war of words and put the devil on the run. But know this. Even Jesus had to say three times before the devil left. Did you know sometimes you have to repeat yourself? The power of speaking the word of God is evident and necessary to win the fight of faith 
that we are fighting today. In Mark 11, 23, Jesus clearly tells us how faith works. Faith is released by speaking words. And if you and I are silent, if we don't pray, if we don't say what God wants us to pray and say, guess what? We actually lose by default. So you and I, just like Jesus, must win the war of words in order to win in every conflict. I know people may not want to hear this, but a war of words is going on in each of our lives every day. We see it in the natural world between governments. We see it in, 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 we see it in government between this party and that party, this person and that person. You know, y'all know what I'm saying. No, there's a, real, there's a war of words going on in each of our lives every day. Winning that war will determine life or death, blessing or cursing. And God has supplied to you and me, the church, all of us who have been born again, the ammunition, and the word power to win in every area of life. Listen to this now. There is life. There is healing. There is joy. There is victory. There is blessing in every word of God. So today I want you to make a confession with me before we go home tonight. I want you to say, I have a spirit of faith. I believe, therefore I speak. I will win the war of words and experience the blessing of God in my life. Words, what do they do to us? Well, let me share what they do with us. Words do three things for you and for me. Number one, the words you speak identify you. How many of you are Christians in this room? How do I know that? By your testimony. Hallelujah. By your words. How many could say, I am a Christian? I am a Christian. Words identify you. And as Christians, that means we're Christ-like. If we are Christians, which we are, if we've accepted Jesus into our heart, if we've confessed him as our Lord and Savior, if we've believed in our own heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. And when you accepted Jesus, you became a brand new creation. So one of the words that you and I need to say in this new year to walk out the new life that is actually in us is this. I am a new creation. And that confession, those words are based on the word of God from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Would you turn there real fast? I'm about ready to finish tonight. I believe that you're going to hear next week words of faith. I believe that you're going to hear words of life next week. You need to avail yourself to these three days of ministry. I know that it's real easy to come up with an excuse. It's real easy to say, you know what? I'll just watch it online. Truth is, I don't even know if it's going to be online. I'm not sure. We live stream many of our services, but I can't tell you 
if, if all of the services are going to be online. But I'm saying all that because you are going to get words of life next week. You are going to get words of faith next week. And the Bible teaches us that faith is the victory. The victory. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm getting ready to close. It says this. Therefore, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, verse 18, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Words. They make us or break us. They identify us. The words we speak set the boundaries of our life. And number three. The words you speak affect your inner man, your inward man, or may I say it this way, the real you, the spirit man. How many of you want to have a great 2018? I'm going to share with you how to do it. Make this declaration, say, I will grow spiritually in 2018. You see, you and I have to make a decision to grow. It's not just up to God. It's up to us. The greatest enemy to faith that you and I will ever face is a lack of understanding of God's word. In fact, all hindrances to faith center around this lack of knowledge because, and here's why, listen to this, because you cannot believe or have faith beyond your actual knowledge of the word of God. So if you want to have the best year that you've ever had in your whole Christian life so far, and how many of you know it's been good and it's getting better because we're growing in Christ? This year, you and I have to make a determination that we are going to grow. Everybody say, I am going to grow. Say this confession with me because you see, your confession is actually your faith speaking. Your confession is actually the words that you speak. And God said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You and I have got to put the word in our mouth. Now, the good news is God's put it there. <laughs> he said, for the word of faith is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. And in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. So they preached the word. They heard the word. The word was in their mouth. And the word was in their heart. But in order for it to come to pass, it has to be spoken. So I want you to make this declaration with me. This confession for 2018. Because these are words to live by. Say this with me. Say in 2018, 
that my faith will grow. I am determined that my knowledge of God's word will grow. Let me run that by you again. All hindrances to faith, all hindrances to faith center around one thing, a lack of knowledge. So God doesn't want us to have a lack of knowledge this year, does he? He wants us to have an abundance of knowledge. And where do we find that knowledge? From the Bible. And so I want to leave this thought with you today. When the sinner comes to Jesus, his sins are remitted, blotted out. But not only are his sins blotted out, but all that he was, spiritually speaking, in the sight of God, is blotted out. His sins cease to exist. He, the believer, becomes a brand new man in Christ Jesus. When you look into into your mirror tonight and tomorrow, you only see the house that you live in, your body. You can't see the real man on the inside. The real you. When you were born again, the man on the inside became a new creature in Christ. The spiritual nature of man without Christ is a fallen nature, a satanic nature. When you were born again, Something happened inside of you and me instantly. The very life and nature of God came into you. And I'll close with this because this is the thought that I want you to have as we move forward in this new year. God created you as a brand new creature, a new creation. Folks, it's a new life, and there's a new way of living, and in order to enjoy that life, you've got to follow him just the way he wants you to. He wants us to speak words of life. He wants us to speak words of faith. He wants us to speak words of blessing. He wants us to speak words of victory. He wants us to speak words of joy. He wants us to speak words of peace. He wants us to pray what he wants us to pray. He wants us to say what he wants us to say. (laughs) What am I trying to say? I'm saying that if you're going to live a victorious life in 2018, you got to say so. You got to say who you are in Christ. You have to say what you have in Christ. You have to say what you can do in Christ. And then listen to this as I close. Ding. And then go out and do it. Do what he is telling you to do. And miracles will follow in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said with me, amen. Let's lift our our hands to heaven as we close. Yeah, you can play softly, please. Father, we thank you for what you're about to do in our life and around America. It is your will, Father, that America be saved. It is your will that America come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And my prayer tonight with your people at Words of Life is, use us, Lord. Send us as new creation into this lost and dying world and help us to lead people to Jesus. Help us, Father, to show them how they too can become a new creation just like we are. 
Help us, Father. To take people from destruction into life. From death into life. Help us, Father, in this new year. Realize who we are. And Father, minister to us the words that we need to grow by. In Jesus' mighty name, and the church said with me, amen. Now, if you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, would you just bow your head just for a moment, everyone, just for a moment? Because I don't want to close out any service without an invitation. Because I don't know your heart, but the Lord knows your heart. And maybe you're here tonight and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you need to. And maybe everybody here has. I'm not sure. But what I do know is we don't want any opportunity to pass us. And we want you to know him as your Lord and Savior. If you're here tonight and you're not sure, if you're not sure, if you're born again, but you want to be sure, you want to know without a shadow of a doubt that heaven is your home and Jesus is your Lord, then would you pray this prayer out loud with me? In fact, I'm just going to ask the entire congregation to pray this prayer with me. Would you say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you now. You said he that comes to you, you will not cast out, but you will take in. Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord and he is your son. And I place my faith and trust in him now to be my Savior, to be my Lord. Father, based on your word, I confess now that Jesus is Lord, and I receive him now as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I receive him. And I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead for my justification. So tonight, I declare through you and by you, I am justified. I am made righteous. I am made new through you in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Folks, are you excited about next Wednesday night? I know that this might, we didn't do a lot of shouting tonight. We didn't do any running tonight. We didn't do, no. But God wants you to know something, that if you're going to live, there's only one way you can live, and that's by his word. If you're going to live, there's only one way you can live, by faith. What, what are you, what, so what have you been talking about, Pastor Stan, tonight? Here's what I'm talking about. God has faith words for your life. Receive those words. Live by those words. Exercise those words. And watch what God does for you. So before we go, let's just do one last thing. Say, I'm blessed coming into church. I'm blessed going out of church. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. And everything I put my hand to prospers. My best days are right now. And they're before me. My path is getting brighter every day. His words are my life. They are the bread I eat.
And because of it, his words produce everything in me that I will ever need or desire. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. I think I'm done. Glory to God. God bless you, everybody. Have a good night. We'll see you on Sunday morning. We're going to be talking about some powerful things. And let's keep our president in prayer. Keep our leaders in prayer. And let's keep next week's ministry in prayer. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a good night. Oh, yeah. Keep me on, keep me on for a minute. I forgot. One of our dear members went home, and t- went home to heaven this week. His name is Matthew Harris. His service, if you happen to know him, will be at Hadley Davis Funeral Home. His viewing is this Friday from 2 to 8. The service is actually, what time? 10 o'clock on Saturday morning at Hadley Davis. His name is Matthew Harris. He was a member of over 25 years, a very quiet wonderful beautiful gentleman who sat about three rows back there very faithful and God now he's in heaven and we're he's cheering us on and we just pray for his family that his family be comforted and helped in this moment of their life in Jesus name and everybody said amen God bless you everybody have a good night Yeah.